started following along with me, what you should do is pick an animal to work from. So basically any kind of design that is going to be created for movies, games, whatever it is, if it has to start from scratch, it's one thing. Uh, but I would say that the most important aspect of any kind of design is how much it is actually rooted in reality. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and pick a lion. Now, the reason I'm picking a lion is because I sort of have an idea of what I want my creature to look like already, and I am making sure that it is actually uh, a hunter creature, an aggressive creature, you know, a predator. If you are looking to do something else, you know, like a harmless creature or, you know, herbivore, something like that, then, you know, maybe pick a horse or, you know, a bull, something like that, something different. The reason I picked the lion is because I really like uh, just felines in general. I think they have really interesting things to work from. And what I like to start doing is brainstorming some ideas. So taking a look here at what I've got, it's just a, uh, a plate from a book called Atlas of Animal Anatomy. I have this book. Um, I found this image on the internet, and uh, you can find it really quickly as well if you just type in lion anatomy, and if you go to the search queries and do large images, you'll see that these will pop up fairly easily. Now, uh, what I have here is a lot of muscles, right? And while we don't want to talk specifically about muscles, I want to sort of get you guys an idea of what I'm looking for. So. I'm going to go ahead here and just grab uh, something like, we can actually pick uh, one of these uh, dark gray colors here from the image itself. And there are some things that I really like about this. So, for example, most animals are going to have uh, this sort of a, a connective tissue here, as you can see. And this connective tissue uh, can actually lead to an interesting design uh, solution for us later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start marking things out a little bit more boldly here so you can see. I'm guessing the grays and picking up that well. So let's go ahead and uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure that this is a lot uh, longer. So something of a larger connection like this. And that would leave some gap for us to do sort of like a webbing, an idea like that. So something like a webbing over here would be interesting. And uh, my image here, if I go to image and then mode, you'll see that it is grayscale. So I can just do RGB color and then flatten it. And then uh, it's completely fine. And I can use colors again. So there's what I'm going to do. Since we're not losing anything, it's quite fine. So again, this area here, sort of like a webbing. OK. And I'm going to undo this because I don't want to distract ourselves. So this area is interesting. And then I sort of want to grab this sort of a uh, idea. This would be the latissimus muscle. Um, I sort of want to give it wings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of move this muscle that way. So instead of it starting down here and then just going that way, I would do it like this probably. And then from over here, I could most likely pull out some sort of uh, muscle structure that gives our wings something to uh, sort of join onto the shoulder area. So something like that and then some really really big big wings like this. Even like I, I, it would be even larger than this but since I'm limited by the screen space that I'm working with uh, you guys get the idea. So I would do a few things to emphasize this little connection as well as I want to definitely change the tail. I'm going to make a much longer tail and a much thicker tail. Okay, That's a, one of the things that I want to do. And to continue on our design process, I'm definitely going to change the face quite a bit. Now, my idea for the face is to have, and for this, I think I'll just go ahead and I'll erase this and I'll start sketching in with that gray that we were working with. Um, just pick something randomly here on the body as far as color goes. So we know we want some sort of a a wing structure coming out of here and that it's going to have some sort of connection to the front of the shoulders here and then we can do some sort of a uh, in between of the ribs sort of going this way like that. And then we just know we're just gonna do this here. We know for a fact that we're gonna have pretty pretty large 
wings okay so something like that and they would be really a lot taller a lot bigger but you know we only have so much to work with here so far now the face itself I'm looking for some sort of um, I would say instead of the ears being up here something like an armored plate like this something like that that we might be able to use in order to switch up how this creature attacks so I'm definitely looking into having some sort of an interesting thing here and then we can probably droop the ears down here to make something interesting we'll play a lot around with this idea uh, inside of ZBrush which is going to be a lot easier but uh, I do like to work with just sort of silhouettes here as far as the arms and leg goes I am most likely going to elongate the legs from here on down so I can most likely uh, just make these a little bit longer so I would probably push these down here and then the feet themselves would most likely rest down here I would do something a little bit different here more like more like toes themselves not really the paws that we see here because uh, tiger paws you know feline paws are very specific in the way they look I would most likely bend this this way and then get some longer more slender fingers coming down something like that so that I could increase here sort of uh, his power with his legs so just so you guys have an idea of what I'm going for and then I would do this both things you know just elongate these a little bit more here and then here as well as well as the front paws so that's something I would work on doing and then just changing the profile will do a lot for us here now I'm not gonna be you know a draftsman here and just uh, try to design everything on paper I want to do this in ZBrush but just to give you an idea of what I'm thinking about we're gonna start blocking in a lot of the muscles and I've already mentioned that we're gonna put a lot of emphasis on this webbing area here and we're definitely gonna make the tail a lot thicker and longer okay another thing that I want to do is I want to sort of break up this little shape that uh, is formed more or less uh, on the ribcage so I'd like his profile to be a little bit thinner like this so I would most likely uh, just remove this a little bit altogether if you can imagine that a little bit so give him a, a little bit more interesting of a uh, silhouette as well as maybe cutting down on his back a little bit and then we can grab a darker color here and then make this go up a little bit higher just give him something more interesting of a profile and then the neck itself we can probably also sort of curve inwards so ideally you know this may not look like much but we've already changed a lot of things considerably and it's interesting for us to play around with this kind of an idea and then we can you know change the face up as we see fit you can do open mouth closed mouth whatever it is that we feel is best but you can for example think about doing uh, teeth or something like that like saber tooth teeth something like that and you can see that things start to take shape quite quickly here so let's go ahead and uh, use this image uh, down here we'll just use this it doesn't really uh, change that much for uh, our ZBrush uh, starting point when we create our base mesh in uh, Z spheres so that's it for this one I'll see jump straight into ZBrush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a, a texture here from our project files. So I'm going to find here my reference, which is going to be this one here. And then what I would like to do is uh, to actually, we can go ahead and get a Z sphere here. We can just draw it out in the middle, press T, and uh, find our symmetry point, which would be right here. So this would be the center of the model, which means this is where the face would be. And what I want to do is I want to sort of uh, create these uh, two uh, spheres on either side. That way I can very easily add a piece here for, say, the body. And then another couple of these spheres so we can have the 
legs. So something like this just to get ourselves started. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, go back into draw mode here, pressing Q, and then add a couple of spheres, make them a little bit smaller like this, give ourselves a little bit of a shoulder. And the idea is, we're going to bring an image here very quickly, but uh, the idea is to just block things out really quickly. And then we can go ahead and do other things. So I can go ahead and do this and then add another set of z-spheres like this. That way we have our legs more or less positioned. Notice that I'm working with that perspective. This is for a reason. I do want this to be orthographic for now. I can add a sphere down in the middle here. Just make this bigger as if this is the body. And then we can add one in the middle for the neck, like so. Then we can add another one right there for the face. And then we can just make those fairly big, like that. So very simple, nothing fancy. And then we can just, uh, we'll add a couple for the tail, uh, that's for sure. So just move that out there, move this back. Careful not to make a mess like me here. And it should be working just fine. Okay, so that is our very rudimentary base mesh. Let's go ahead and uh, grab our texture here and add it to Spotlight. And uh, the good thing about Spotlight is you can use it in a variety of ways, but the uh, best way to do it is to just press Z after, you know, you can, you, let's change the opacity first. So let's do opacity here. Let's take it down a notch. So something like that. Press Z and then uh, now we can make our lizard thing look like a lion. So here's the thing to keep in mind. Don't zoom in, okay? Keep it uh, more or less uh, static when you're trying to move it. That's why we added these Z spheres uh, sort of before getting started. And let's just uh, find the points, okay? So I'm going to make this is the neck, this is the face. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we're going to be changing a lot of things, okay? Let's uh, find the sphere here for the shoulder. You can see that I'm just clicking sort of indiscriminately here, trying to, to get where I want to go. And uh, we can move this here towards the back, move that there. We can add z-spheres now for the hands like this, so very simple. This is why I meant to keep it an orthographic because uh, this will come back uh, to be very important in the future. And I'm going to scale this sphere here for the chest. I'm going to scale this sphere here for the body. I'm going to move this one for the leg, which as you can see, pretty far off, right? So let's go ahead and try our best here. Let me redo those. Move this. I'm going to try to move everything that I can, okay? And then uh, if you use a big brush like me, you'll end up moving a lot of things when you don't want to, so just make your brush smaller, and then you'll be able to play around with things. So move that back. Move this here towards the front. As you can see, a smaller brush makes everything that much more manageable. I'm going to scale up the area here for the pelvis. And then I can just make this tail come in a little bit longer. I can curve it too. It doesn't have to be curved, but you know, let's just do our best. So something like this. Very simple. We can add a z-sphere here for the legs, move it down. And I think we'll add one more over here. And then there you go. So that's our foot structure right there. And our hand looks fine, I would say. Not too shabby. You can add more spheres if you want to make sure that this thing is properly spaced and stuff like that, but it doesn't really matter. The idea is uh, if you have the uh, texture here, let me load it back in there, turn the light box off, and just position it roughly there. You can see that we're pretty much where our proportions should be, okay? This is effectively a lion base mesh. Simple as it is, it'll get the job done uh, for us, okay? So I can now start thinking about things from the front and other little tidbits. So if we hide our image here, and let's not mess with this side any more than we have to, you can see that things are a little bit uh, disjointed, right? It's just a little bit weird looking. So let's bring out a couple of shoulders here, just so we can have this sort of separation. I kind of like that uh, pose for the arms. 
but we can always just you know move everything outward as you can see our legs they're a little bit weird right so let's add a couple of spheres here move them out and move these guys out here as well and again we're not messing with the side we're just messing with the front and now we can make the scale a little bit less on that and there we go so now from the front and from the side we have a let's just say acceptable amount of uh, of z spheres and detail on our model everything else i would say uh, from this point onward we can probably just refine by uh, sculpting so i would say we should probably leave it here we're going to be changing uh, a lot of things uh, very soon so we don't want to get too attached to our little simple base mesh okay um Things like adding some volume here, like maybe you can you can move this sphere down a little bit to give you that chest separation. You just want to be careful not to mess too much with it, okay? So I'm going to just move it like so, and we'll leave it alone. So I'll save this as lesson 04 start, and so you guys are aware of what I did. Uh, if you start on lesson 04 here, uh, you can see that I've already sort of made it into a Dynamesh. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, it's very simple. Just go to Adaptive Skin down here, click Make Adaptive Skin, and then uh, it'll give you this result here, which you can see. And uh, it's going to give you uh, these two subdivisions. You don't really need them, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Delete Lower over here on my interface. And now we're going to go into Dynamesh. So Geometry, Dynamesh, we'll do 64. It does, it, again, doesn't really matter. Low number is fine. 64. This looks good. We can play with it. Uh, we can also go ahead and uh, in the poly groups, make sure to just group visible. So it's all one group and we don't really have to worry about it from here on out. If we need to poly group, we'll do it later. And uh, like I mentioned before, it's time for us to actually use some uh, animal anatomy to help us in our journey. So for example, when we're trying to design the face, I definitely like this sort of a profile on the skull. So I may actually do this as a shape for the skull. Uh, just something interesting that I can derive from that, as well as I'm going to be using these images that I have to sort of guide myself along the way. So I have these images on another monitor, okay, and uh, I'll be referencing to them as much as I can. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we want to do is start moving some things around. So I'm going to use the move brush here and it's big draw size make sure we have a symmetry on you don't want to do anything without symmetry okay and we can start playing around with things so i have my images on the other side here on my other monitor and if you remember one of the things that i did want to do is sort of tuck this stomach in a little bit give it a little bit more of a dynamic look on the shape so i'm going to smooth all of this so we get rid of that faceted look and i'm probably going to raise the pelvis over here and thicken up these legs quite a bit okay so something like this in preparation for the things that I want to add as far as the shapes go so get ourselves a nice thick shoulder like this and start moving the legs to a more interesting direction you can see that I turn the floor on this is important I want to keep the floor on for now at least until I start working with things and I definitely remember I said I was going to elongate the legs. I'm going to do that uh, probably in the next lesson where we really start messing with proportions. For now, I just want to get sort of an idea going with what I have. So I'm going to inflate this tail here. And if you recall, I wanted to make it really long. So just something right off the bat to change our design. And we're starting pretty simple. Nothing major, nothing fancy trying my best to just make things a little bit thicker and you know start getting some ideas out there so I kinda like this sort of direction that everything is going I'm gonna probably make this a little bit thicker and I'm gonna elongate that neck okay so already starting to mess with stuff a little bit here now the face we're gonna have to talk about soon enough but we're gonna leave it alone just gonna do a little bit of moving and remember we're just doing from the side so from the front it still looks pretty bad so 
we have a couple of lessons here to tackle what that's going to look like and always go back to your reference which is what I'm doing now on my other screen that's why you're hearing me click it's just I'm trying to find the actual image that I want to use that is just muscles so we want to probably start adding that little bit of webbing to our model so I'm going to use lazy mouse here with my clay brush I'm going to drop the lazy radius down to one that'll give me a very nice and smooth brush to work with as you can see right there and I'm gonna make that pretty thin so you see how I add detail and then I go ahead and use alt and just cut that back in now we're gonna have a nice little gap in here for the leg muscles to come up to so it's gonna be good for us it's gonna look fine now whenever you're dealing with sort of a z-sphere base mesh or something like that you want to be careful especially when you go into thin areas like this because that could happen so make sure to turn on your back face masking if you don't know where that is that is on the uh, the brush here um, or sorry excuse me it's in it's in the auto masking menu inside the brush a menu here so if you get a brush auto masking and there should be a back face masking button right there so you have to turn these on individually for each brush so if you're using the standard brush and you don't have this on you see I have it in my interface to be handy you'll have to turn it on so just so you guys know if you want to thicken something up without messing on the inside there this is how to do it so just going to continue adding some detail and blocking things in and since I want to move relatively quickly here uh, don't be surprised that if you know after the first couple of lessons here I just refine the body on my own and then we move on to something else there'll be nothing new here that you haven't seen on say my elephant sculpting course which is just focused on copying anatomy uh, especially uh, you know looking for realism and things like that so I'm gonna try my best not to repeat myself since I am doing uh, another animal so I'm using the Damien standard brush here and I'm gonna cut that in and now I want to start thinking about a little bit of uh, this area here basically the the latissimus muscle would be coming this way okay and what I want to do is add a bunch of volume over here could be neck muscles could be a whole lot of things but we'll just add something like this and maybe a little thin line like that where we can extrude our wings from so we can mask that out there and just move this up so we know more or less what we're dealing with before we play around and then since it's a dynamesh you can just redynamesh that and uh, we'll be golden and inflate that as well you'll see that we'll be moving pretty quickly here the idea of this tutorial is to be tasked with creating and designing something for film and you have a tight deadline which is common when you're in pre-production or something like that sometimes you need a creature you're trying to sell something uh, you know producer needs to show it to the director ASAP uh, it just things go quickly when you're in that environment so uh, it's important for you guys to be aware that this is a very a pretty advanced tutorial and uh, I expect you guys to be fully competent in ZBrush to follow along now I want to make some pretty big wings okay and uh, we'll be able to separate those uh, just by doing something like this here just very quickly we'll just think about that and we can play around with proportions later but I'm gonna redynamish this and just smooth it down for now so we have an idea of what we're doing and in fact uh, we'll probably split this off so if you see any holes like this uh, just make sure you go ahead and inflate everything it's not a big deal uh, it's just sort of uh, faces that sort of were inside out so ZBrush doesn't really know how to deal with that so it makes holes but if you inflate more likely than not it'll fix everything like you can see it might still leave a few bits and bobs here for you to tweak like this here and you know some other areas but just so you know I think this is a important little tip to show you guys so I'm just gonna redynamize that and smooth it out and I can split this off later on really quickly and make the wings super large if I want to and in fact what I'm gonna do now is just very quickly with the lasso mask here and I have that on my interface as a shortcut by the way I'm just going to separate these wings completely here just so we're clear on what we're doing okay and then uh, I'll just curve these out like this so you know these are wings and uh, we'll make them look pretty cool later on but for now just blocking things out and uh, again remember that high pelvis that I wanted pretty thick here 
I would say lower this area, give it a little bit of a gut. Just a straight line there would break it, which, which is cool. It's just a little design that we can add into that. And we'll start thinking about making these legs uh, longer and larger now, which is really important. So I'm going to elongate these a little bit. And what we'll do now is, since we're running a little bit short on time, I will like to split this up into the next lesson. So I'm just going to trim dynamic this little bit of the shoulder here. And yeah, this looks pretty good to me. Just play around with the trim dynamic with some shapes here. Inflate the forearms. We'll get something to look interesting very soon here. And then the hands will worry about later. So just make sure that these are thick enough. I'm going to make a really strong creature. Anyway, uh, we'll stop here to change. Basically, now what I want to do is go in and continue to refine the body before we move on to the face. So after this lesson, I'll most likely just work a little bit on this off screen using the same tools that you're seeing me use right now. Uh, only it'll be for a little bit longer, maybe half an hour or something like that. Uh, at the most, I don't want to spend too much time with it either because we're still going to go through iterations and things like that. So uh, I'm just going to thicken all of this up here on the legs, okay? Uh, just trying to work my best here on uh, making sort of a, a foot here that's going to be pretty thick, but is going to allow me to have sort of uh, fingers, you know, toes. It's going to really be helpful. So I want to change that as much as I can. I want to sort of up this uh, area here on the heel and do this. So we can start working a little bit better with this sort of a, a perspective. And this is something really common when you see sort of creature legs and, and feet and things like that. Is just to maybe you have this leg a little bit more forward like so. You have the second bit of the leg a little bit opposite to that. And then the foot itself is going to be able to have its own shape. And if I'll just show you here with uh, just redynameshing this really quick, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just mask, use my mask pen here, and just mask out sort of what I'm looking for as far as toes go. So something like this. And then you can see it's pretty thin. That's what you get when working with the snake hook. Uh, but sort of something like this, and I can start thinking about uh, toes and things like that really quickly without having to worry about it too much. Now we're going to spend uh, a lot of time on this area of our creature later on when we come to the detailing stage, but for now we're just looking to block some general ideas in and get ourselves to a point where we can start having things to move around and play around with. So what I'd like to do is basically add some knuckles to these hands. So I'm going to redynamesh this. Again, I'm not changing my resolution on the dynamesh. Still 64, okay? So I'm going to add sort of like a knuckle here, knuckle there, and then we can really ground these feet like this, if you know what I mean. Now obviously it's going to be pretty big. We'll have to equalize it with the rest of the arms and the hands, but you guys get the gist of what I'm trying to show you right now. And the reason we start with the z sphere base mesh is because we're going to play with the proportions as much as we are. So what I'm going to do is I just, I'm trying to get a good angle on this here just so we can add the knuckle, push this down, push this forward. It's a little bit tricky. We'll probably have to work on it a little bit more very soon. But this here will function for us. It'll give you a nice solid base for him to stand on and that's really in the end of the day, all that really matters. Just that you have something different with a cool connection there. So something like this, and then we can pull out that little heel bit towards the front. So something like that, that's interesting already. And we, if we don't like the scale, we can scale it back. But I like that as a design element, so I'm going to keep it. Now, moving towards the legs here, I want to sort of add, I guess, what you would call the knee. So let's go ahead and grab the clay brush here. And in fact, damn standard first, let's cut in the muscles of the leg here. 
And as you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble. That's because I haven't polygrouped anything. So let's polygroup just the front half of the body for now. So something like this, and then we can just go into polygroups and then uh, group visible. So just group visible. There we go. And then we can just hide this for now and, and work on the legs without having to worry about it. So thighs, here we go. Again, using animal anatomy as a base. Nothing, uh, we're still designing something. It's still a creature. It's still out of this world. So we have to be careful not to do it too similar to a creature. So as you can see, I cut on either side and then I have added the muscles there. Now on felines and most other things, you're going to have this very, very thin, okay? Uh, it's not going to be very thick at all, uh, this bit of the muscle here. So I'm going to add a little bit of thickness right there and then everything else is just tendons and strips and, th and things like that. So we don't want to go too crazy with it, but we can play around considerably. And I just want to sort of show you the basic idea of what goes into brainstorming something and, and seeing if it looks good and being happy with it or not. So now that you're happy with it, or at least in my case I am, I can really start playing around with this. And I can even do something like uh, thicken up the bottom here and make sure that this area you know, gets thinner as it goes up. We can add some sort of uh, uh, r wrinkling up here just as it goes up to as an idea of, hey look, there might be some armor here or something like that. I don't know, but we can leave ourselves a note say okay look this is where we're, we're more or less going Now, if you're gonna add volume to something like the calf muscle you should think about it as a human which is the volume is most likely gonna be down here this is uh, on us it's called the gastrocnemius muscle uh, but since the leg would be bent I'm gonna inflate it a little bit here closer to the top still gonna try to keep the volume down below as much as possible keeping it on the sides here and in general just looking at all possible angles probably thicken up these legs doesn't hurt as well as pulling them inward like this to get the adductor muscles going so you can see pretty interesting range of shapes that we're already getting here and we're not even you know 30 minutes in so that's pretty good so that's nice I like that we'll have to work on the front uh, and, but since the front is probably going to be just the same that you're seeing here, only in the front, I might skip that, and I'm going to move on to the tail. I want to show you guys something interesting before I sort of skip ahead a little bit and refine this stuff. So something like this here, so I just get my tail going. Uh, like I said, I want a relatively long tail, a relatively uh, thick tail. So it's a little bit tricky to deal with with these areas, and... Uh, we can always just sort of inflate to get the thickness back, but don't overdo it. If you ever want to do something like a sharp tip, uh, and again, this is not something that might stick uh, throughout the lessons, but just so you show, just so I can show you how I would do it. If you want to make this really sharp, just make sure to pull exactly in the uh, middle area right here, pull it out, and then smooth everything else but that tip. You see how it creates a really sharp tip. Uh, and that's uh, sort of what I'm going for. So this is long enough as far as the tail goes. Not bad at all. And uh, what I want to do now is tweak this area here with the wings. So the wings themselves, I'm going to make them come up a little bit more towards the front. Okay, So something like this. I'm going to have to angle them to the side. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll just grab uh, a lasso mask and I'll just throw it over here. I'll invert that mask and then I'll just rotate it down like that and then I can just move it outward if I if I need to. So something like this so we have that break in the wings and that seems like it would be large enough. Might make it bigger but eh, we'll figure out the wings at a later lesson. But this will already help us out and now I want to connect this wing here and this is important. Let me hide this just so we're working with just the connection area. I don't want it to be straight down. I want it to actually angle that way. So if you imagine this line, it's going down. So it's doing like this. I actually want this line to go that way. So that's going to take a little bit of work. Best thing to do, Damien standard, and pull it out that in that direction and start smoothing it until you more or less get what you're looking for like this. 
doesn't matter if you're being pretty rough with it, okay? And then, uh, yeah, that's going to work for us, and that's going to, in turn, give us something interesting to work over here as far as a connection goes. So I'm just going to cut that in to the area. And I think what we can do is, um, I think we can do one more lesson here on the body. I might not want to skip just showing you the front here and a little bit more work on the wing. So let's stop here, and as a final little uh, lesson on the body for now, we'll go ahead and uh, just go to the 